The universe is big, but how big is it? One trillion light years across? One decillion light years across? Unfortunately, we do not have an answer to that question. The furthest we can see is 45.7 billion light years from Earth. The region that is visible to us forms a sphere around the solar system that is 90 billion light years across. This is known as the visible universe. Will we ever be able to see beyond this distance, delving further into the entire universe? The answer is yes, but with the catch. We could be able to see further than what we see today, but not much further. There is an ultimate limit to how far we will ever be able to see. But why is this the case? First, we need to understand why there is a visible universe in the first place. Light is extremely fast. Light can travel from the screen to your eyes in only nanoseconds. But on cosmic scales, this is extremely slow. Light takes 4.3 years to travel from the nearest star system to us. And the recent supernova in the Pinwall Galaxy actually happened 21 million years ago because that's how long it took the light to actually travel to us. The universe came into existence 13.8 billion years ago. It started off as a hot, dense plasma. For many thousands of years, electrons were separated from atomic nuclei. It was far too hot for them to form atoms. Photons would bounce off these charged particles through a process known as Thomson scattering. This made the universe opaque. Light was not able to travel in a straight line before being scattered. As the universe expanded, this plasma gradually cooled. 300,000 years after the Big Bang, it reached a temperature of around 3,000 Kelvin. At this temperature, it was cold enough for atoms to capture electrons, forming hydrogen and helium gas. The universe became transparent to light. For the first time, light could travel in straight lines for millions of years without being scattered. This event is known as photon decoupling. The photons released when the universe transitioned from plasma to gas can still be seen today in what's known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB for short. When these photons were released, they were in the visible part of the spectrum, but as the size of the universe has increased by a factor of a thousand since decoupling, the wavelength of the light has been stretched into the microwave range. These microwaves can be used to construct an image of the universe when it was only 3,000 years old. The further we look out into space, the further back in time we see. But the CMB at a distance of 45.7 billion light years is the furthest we can see back. If we want to see back further, we are stopped by an opaque wall of plasma. Given that the CMB formed 13.8 billion years ago and light travels 13.8 billion light years in that amount of time, you might wonder why the CMB isn't 13.8 billion light years away. That's because the CMB was far closer to us when its light was emitted. It's a lot further away now because of the expansion of space. It has been suggested that we could see beyond the Great Plasma Wall by detecting neutrinos or gravitational waves emitted from a few moments after the Big Bang. But even if we could see back to the moment of the Big Bang, we wouldn't be able to see much further. We could only see an extra 900 million light years. Yeah, not a lot. The maximum speed information can travel is the speed of light. The universe simply has not been around long enough for information to travel far enough. A bubble 46.6 billion light years around the Earth is all we can in theory see, at least right now, set by the speed of light limit. But that's all we can see right now. If we wait long enough, light from further patches of space would be able to reach us. If we wait thousands, millions, billions, trillions of years, we would eventually be able to see the whole universe, right? Well, no, thanks to dark energy. How much a particular chunk of space is expanding is given by Hubble's constant. Objects move away from each other due to the expansion of space in between them. The more space that is in between the two bodies, the faster they move away from each other. 
The speed these galaxies move away from each other is given by Hubble's law, which says the relative velocity of the two objects is given by their distance multiplied by Hubble's constant. Hubble's constant is currently 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, or 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. If Hubble's constant is 70 kilometers per second per megaparsec, then a galaxy 100 megaparsecs away will be moving away at 7,000 kilometers per second. The further and further the galaxy is away from us, the faster and faster the galaxy moves away. At a distance of 14.4 billion light years, the galaxies are so far away that they are moving away faster than light. But how can they move away faster than light? Isn't that impossible? It is not actually moving away faster than light, but the expansion of space in between makes it seem this is the case. Light would not be able to keep up with the expansion of space. Instead of moving towards us, the light would move away from us. Light emitted from these galaxies would not reach us, and the further the galaxy gets, the faster it would move. It accelerates away from us. However, this only happens if Hubble's constant stays constant. What if it goes down with time? Instead of these galaxies accelerating away from us, they instead slow down. The distance at which they move away from us faster than light becomes larger. Light that was moving away begins to move towards us. The gravitational attraction between galaxies slows the expansion. I made a simulation of the expansion of the universe using Python. I calculated this using the Friedman equation. So if we run this, we see how the universe has expanded over time. On the x-axis, we have the time from the present day. The numbers are negative because it's going into the past. This is 2 billion years ago, 4 billion years ago, and here is the Big Bang, about 13.8 billion years ago. On the y-axis, we have the scale factor. So if the scale factor is 0.6, it means that the universe was 60% as large as it is now. So you can see that the universe has gotten larger with time, and that the expansion has been decelerating. Here we see the Hubble constant. It has also been going down. Right, today it's about uh, 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, but in the past it used to be a lot higher. So if this is how the universe has expanded in the past, how will it look in the future? Well, we can use the Friedman equations to calculate how it will expand in the future. And this is the expansion for the next going up to 70 billion years in the future. We can see while the Hubble constant was going down, it stops going down. It eventually reaches a constant value. And we can see that the universe doesn't keep on decelerating. Its expansion accelerates. And in fact, we can see a little bit of the acceleration in the present day. If you look extremely carefully, you will see this line starting to bend upwards. The reason for this is because of dark energy. Dark energy is everywhere. It is an intrinsic property of space. Dark energy tries to push everything apart. When more space gets created, more dark energy gets made. The density of matter goes down as the universe expands. When matter becomes more spread out, the gravitational attraction between matter decreases, but the density of dark energy stays the same. As more dark energy gets generated, dark energy's effect on expansion becomes more noticeable, resulting in an exponential expansion in the near future. Galaxies that are far away enough will always be, and have always been, moving away from us faster than light. We will never be able to see these galaxies. Let's go back to the Python simulation. 
On this particular window, we see how the size of the observable universe has changed over time. We can see that the observable universe grows exponentially in size. 70 billion years from now, the observable universe will be 7 trillion light years across. But only because the observable universe is bigger doesn't mean that we actually see any more because all the galaxies themselves are now much more spread out. So even if it's a bigger volume that we're looking at, if everything's a lot more spread out, doesn't mean we're seeing more. On this diagram, we see the radius of the observable universe over time in co-moving coordinates. In co-moving coordinates, the coordinate system scales with the universe. If a galaxy is 100 million light years away, and due to the expansion of the universe, its distance grows to 200 million light years away, in co-moving coordinates, it's still 100 million light years away because the system used to measure distances grew with the universe as well. The distance to a galaxy in co-moving coordinates does not change with time. If the edge of the observable universe crosses this galaxy in co-moving coordinates, then the galaxy becomes visible. We can see that in co-moving coordinates, the radius of the observable universe approaches an upper limit of around 63 billion light years. This means that any galaxies that are further than 63 billion light years away today, we will never be able to see in the future. It is unfortunate that we cannot see further than this. However, the small chunk of space that we can see is still absolutely enormous. There is still so much to learn and explore. Well, that's it for this video, so goodbye!